Okay, enough me being a great mom. I'm gonna go hide your father's heart medication. Enjoy your dumb little TV show. Wow, we're finally going back to Netflix. And finally, I don't think it's hyperbole to say this is the hardest video I've ever tried to write. Hi, I'm Kitty Monk. I'm here to talk to you about Bojack Horseman. Or more specifically, his mother, Beatrice. Maybe one day you'll hear my thoughts on Todd. They are not pretty. Now, just a warning, another reason it took so long to make a video for her is Beatrice has one thing in common with Emperor Bellows. They are both on the historical side. As in, their characters are made to critique history. So I can't really talk about her without bringing up historical examples. And like Bellows, I will have to break my no politics rule. Unlike my video on Chef, I probably won't have to constantly censor myself. No promises. Okay, let's begin. Like always, I should give some background. Bojack Horseman is a cartoon that aired on Netflix, and it's one of their greatest. Sucks it ended when it did. The show takes place in a world where animals and humans live together, with certain animals having something resembling a culture. Look at her go, folks. Clearing every hurdle. Look at that form. Beautiful trot. Truly outstanding. A lovely lady indeed. Ta-da! not as deep as Utopia or Beastars, but it's still there. The show follows its titular character, Bojack Horseman. Bojack starred in the 90s sitcom Horsin' Around, this world's version of Full House. But in the prison, he's a washed up nobody who is well known for his various scandals and half-hearted attempts to re-enter show business. While the show seems, at first glance, to be your typical adult comedy, it delves into deeper topics, usually acting as both a deconstruction of sitcoms, in general, and the human condition. I love of Bojack. It's one of my favorite shows of all time. In fact, the first script I ever wrote for YouTube was all about Hank after dark, and how I felt the episode was great otherwise, but should have at least explained Hank's crimes. What are these allegations? These allegations are so crazy, I can't even say them on TV or I'll sound like a crazy person. I mean, I cannot watch Bride of Chucky without thinking they dodged a bullet by not hiring Marilyn Manson to play Damien Baylock. I love that movie otherwise, one of my favorites. Shitty dude. Rags, Johnny Two Shallows, you guys should really make a video on Hank. I would love to see it. Even if you guys already make videos on another Hank, those are good too. I have gotten requests to review Bojack ever since my disenchantment days, and one of my most requested topics is on his mother, Beatrice. But I felt off, mostly because I don't want to ride Shady and Johnny's coattails. I love their videos. They're part of why I became a YouTuber. They just didn't want to seem like I was ripping them off. And there's another reason. Kind of like the Pacifica, I love Beatrice, but what else is there left to say? That she subverts expectations? That she's compelling? That she's Edith's variant? Not at all, I don't find you boring. Only the things you choose to talk about in the way in which you talk about them. <laughs> Pretty sure Ida has another variant that lives in Cleveland. Beatrice, promise me you'll never love anyone as much as I loved Cracker Jack. Okay, there's something. So let's discuss. By this point, I've covered plenty of crappy parents in cartoons, to the point where I wonder if I should continue with YouTube or go see a shrink. Probably YouTube because shrinks cost money and I can't drive. But nobody compares to the Horsemans and by extension, the Sugarmans. Like I said above, Ojek is a show all about deconstruction. In sitcoms, moms and moms-in-laws tend to be on the abusive side. They often raised one of the parents, usually the dad, with all kinds of hilariously abusive practices. Usually, there will be some kind of storyline where the child will learn they were crappy for a reason. It's either they had to put their dreams on hold to take care of them, or they were raised by bad parents themselves, or they were doing the best they could. So in comparison, they are good, but not by much. And oftentimes, the parent will be forgiven. American Dad had Mama and Baba. Bob's Burgers had Gloria and Al. So you're saying the way to show you I love you is just to quietly let your parents be crappy? Kinda. I hate the airport episode. It cannot hold a candle to the swinger episode. Linda's parents were not always like this. So what does Bojack Horseman do? What they always do. Add a little dose of reality and sort of find a compromise theme if I had to put it that way. Growing up, Bojack was raised in San Francisco by his parents, Beatrice and Butterscotch, as horses. Both parents were highly abusive to Bojack and resented him for having the gall to exist. You're actually very lucky. Thank you! 
Butterscotch, it's your fault for having such strong Olympic swimmers. Did you ever think of that? Are you too lazy to pull out? You know tissues exist, right? Bojack has problems communicating with people and usually either suppresses his sadness or drowns it in liquor. This stems from his childhood. When he was little, Bojack stole a cigarette from Beatrice's purse so he could emulate his hero, Secretariat, in his forces. So that's his equivalent of liking, say, Tom Brady or Ronaldo. When she caught him, she made him finish the whole thing as punishment. Don't you dare cry. Don't you ever cry. Are you punishing me for smoking or for stealing? I'm punishing you for being alive. Wow, at least Ida treated Luce and King gently when they stole her elixir. Also, I know this probably isn't the intention of the episode, but I want to bring something up. A common theme you will be seeing in this video is the lesson that just because something was historically seen as accepted or even legal doesn't mean it was correct. Back during the baby boomer era, if they found out a child smoked a cigarette, they would make them finish it. At least Beatrice was being generous. It was common practice to make you smoke an entire carton. The idea was you would get sick from smoking so many at once that you wouldn't want to smoke anymore. Of course, they didn't know back then that this would just factor into addiction, but it's worth the tangent. As an adult, Beatrice's behavior towards him is just as demented as before. After he landed his lead role on Horsin' Around, he invited her to a live taping, and she spent the entire time afterwards critiquing him. Well, it wasn't Ibsen. That's your takeaway? That your son's TV show wasn't Ibsen. I'm sorry, did you need a compliment? In present day, after his memoir is published, she called him up to apologize. I just wanted to tell you, I know. I know you want to be happy, but you won't be, and I'm sorry and also to get answers for her crossword because clearly Google isn't a thing. Plus, I'm pretty sure there's like an answer key in the back. You remember who directed the Philadelphia story? Lubitsch? <sighs> no, Bojack. Goodbye. Unlike most sitcoms, the point is made that while Bojack had a bad childhood, it doesn't excuse how he is now, and a big part of his development is breaking the cycle, if only in minor ways. On top of that, Beatrice doesn't want to change, as that means admitting there's poison in her family, and she's responsible for spreading it. At least that's what I got from this. And regardless, Bojack is under no obligation to forgive her. Still, abusers breed abusers, but more on that later. In season four, Bojack meets a girl who claims to be his biological daughter, Hollyhock. Well, actually, her name isn't just Hollyhock. It's actually Hollyhock Mannheim Mannheim Guerrero Robinson Silberslung Sung Bonzarelli McQuack. You don't know how many takes that took. Though she doesn't hail from the New Haven Mannheim Mannheim Guerrero Robinson Silberslung Sung Bonzarelli McQuack. Be they a family or a law firm. Seriously, this took so many takes. Hollyhock was adopted by eight men in a loving, polyamorous relationship and pretty much got the childhood Bojack never did. A loving one where she's told it's okay to cry and show emotion and her folks are there for her no matter what. Ugh, such a childhood couldn't possibly exist in fiction. Also, me and Hollyhock are the same age. Even if by the time this video was published, I'll have turned 23. True, I was born in 99, not 2000, but it's always been cool when I'm the same age is the character. Still, while Hollyhock is happy with her life, she's always wanted to at least know who her mom is and why she was given up. Bojack decides to help Hollyhock and take her in while they go searching, which ironically proves to be fruitless. <laughs> During this time, Hollyhock starts to ask about the rest of Bojack's family, and as Beatrice is his only next of kin, he reluctantly lets them meet. There turns out to be a complication. Oh. Uh, hi, Mom. Do I know you? Here we go. Is that why she had lipstick stains in season two? Like her mind was starting to go? Yeah, so Beatrice has dementia and she doesn't remember who Bojack is, thinking he's a maid named Henrietta. Could I trouble you for some orange juice, please? Stop calling me Henrietta. There's nobody here named Henrietta. Henrietta, orange juice. Now, you're not being paid for polite conversation. After Bojack unwittingly causes Beatrice to be kicked out of her nursing home, Hollyhock, not realizing abusive parents exist, convinces Bojack to take Beatrice back to L.A. Why? Because she's your mother, and dementia is hereditary. And one day you're gonna be in a home like this, and so will I. And wouldn't you want someone visiting you? Ugh. Bojack isn't happy that everybody dots on her, especially after Hollyhock buys Beatrice a baby doll to dote on. Who are you talking to? Oh, 
keep it down. Oh, you'll make the baby cry. Which, believe it or not, is an actual therapy they give dementia patients, and it seems to help Beatrice as she treats it like the grandchild she never had. Uh, when you grow up, you can be anything you want to be. Bojack, jealous and agitated, which I fully understand. All this shouting is bad for the baby. Where was that keen parenting insight 50 years ago? Rose doll outside the balcony. <laughs> which makes sense later. Bojack goes for hoops trying to retrieve it, which while it doesn't make things right with Beatrice, it helps him deal with Hollyhock. Outside of a few hiccups, things settle down. That is, until Hollyhock collapses from an overdose of pills, having lost a good deal of weight in the process. You okay, Hollyhock? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm awesome. I feel really good. I just, I need a glass of water. Bojack learns this was all because of Beatrice, who had been drugging Hollyhock with weight loss pills, believing it's the only way to help her lose weight. Chub be gone. Hey, the pounds right off. This whole time. Just until she learned to take it herself. Hollyhock, you and I have similar bodies. Then going by my comment section, possibly similar voices, you're perfect the way you are. The drugging, though, is something I have logic problems with. Beatrice had a live-in caregiver, Tina, who also happened to be Herb's caregiver. She started drugging Hollyhock when she had Tina, considering Hollyhock's line of, Beatrice, this coffee is amazing. And the fact she was throwing matches into the Pool. One, how exactly did Beatrice get those pills? The way Bojack acted, he didn't know those were there. If they were his, why not say it? And two, how did Tina not notice her drugging people? Especially in the episode where Hollyhock passed out and Tina suddenly disappeared after that game of Uno. I feel like it would have been better if, say, Bojack didn't want to pay for Tina anymore, so Hollyhock insisted on watching her, but as she's only like 18, she could only do so much. Or she thinks Beatrice doesn't need that much supervision as maybe it's demeaning, and that leads to her getting drugged. Or Bojack starts to trust Beatrice slightly more, and it bites him in the behind. Maybe Beatrice thinks she's pouring sugar into the coffee, and it's, say, pills or something equally sinister, like household cleanser or bleach. Ew, corn nuts. I don't know, I just, I don't think I've ever seen anybody bring this up, and it frustrates me to no end. Bojack, deciding enough is enough, does what he should have done, and takes Beatrice to the worst nursing home he could possibly find, deciding to dump her there for the rest of her days. Best of luck. See ya never. Who is that? Ugh. Bye, Mom. Bojack? So I guess now we should get into her backstory. I know Time Zero doesn't stay still or reverse, it only marches forward. But we're gonna have to take several leaps. Time Zero occasionally bendy straws around, like in Pulp Fiction. In 1944, Beatrice Sugarman is a young girl living with her mother, Honey, a housewife, and her father, Joseph. Joseph Sugarman is a rich man who runs the Sugarman Sugar Cube Company, because get it, horses, and so provides his family with the luxuries of life, especially during wartime. They even have a summer home in Harper's Landing, Michigan. Like I said, a theme you will be seeing with Beatrice is that for some people, the time period can kind of factor into abuse. Not that it's an excuse, but remember how, say, corporal punishments, like spankings, used to be universally accepted? It's still abuse, let me make that very clear, but many people did it because that was what was normal. As it's 1944, Beatrice is expected to grow up to be nothing more than a pretty little housewife, and as a result, her mother drills it into her at every opportunity. Oh, darling, don't lift that. You'll rupture your uterus. One thing I think not a lot of people point out is while Honey herself is a victim, she is still perpetuating abuse. She programs Beatrice to share her damaging mindset. When she gets older, because of her and because of the bullies at school, Beatrice has body image issues. In her mid-twenties, she takes pretty pills. Oh, oh. again, Miss Sugarman, please. Polly, be a darling and fetch me a pretty pill and a glass of water, won't you? It has an older woman, one of her grapes is that childbirth ruined her figure so badly that nobody will want to touch her. I was beautiful before I got pregnant. I know. You ruined me, Bojack. Well, who else would have me now? After what you did to my body? What I did? When Honey first appears, she's shown making pancakes with Beatrice helping. But it's not pancakes for the whole family, it's pancakes for Joseph. All right, Beatrice, you got a good whiff. Now step away from your father's breakfast before he catches you a sniffin' and gives you a spankin'. You know, I hope those pancakes get all moist and gross and soggy and yucky. I know some people say, oh, it isn't the same as Joseph, she was only doing what she knows. But the same goes for Joseph! 
Joseph. The point of his character is he's a product of his time, and that isn't a good thing. Well, but I will make sure the numbers add up and compliment my secretary on her tight sweaters. Same goes for Honey, even if she gets like one extra point because she's still a victim. Bojack is complicated. As a girl, Beatrice is forbidden from having ice cream. Oh, I want a freezy pop. Oh, Beatrice, you know iced cream is for boys. You can sprinkle some sugar on a lemon. That's a good healthy girl snack. Oh, all right. You young child with normal body fat, how dare you try and gain a pound? Her father, well, he at least said this. Father says I'm just growing. Did not help matters. In fact, some good may yet come of this. Doctor says your throat is nearly swollen shut. So perhaps you'll finally lose some of that weight that's given you such troubles. Beatrice also had a brother, Cracker Jack, who sounds like that dude from Hamilton. Uh, I don't need no blinky blanky to fight any Nazis. No, 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 I'm wrong. I think he sounds like that dude from In the Heights. Cracker Jack, fascinated by the propaganda of the time, decided to join the army and signed up for the draft. Compared to his parents, he seemed to be a stand-up guy otherwise, even giving his sister his childhood blanket blinky. B, will you hold on to it for me? <gasps> Me? That's right. I'll fight better if I know Blinky's safe with you. Mwah. This is where tragedy struck. The ironic thing is, as the son of a rich, influential man, Cracker Jack could have easily gotten out of the draft, or been sent somewhere safer, or to do something safer. But he still went. As he was a sheltered boy weighing over his head, he died by the winter's end. His death weighed on the family, and all they had left of him was Blinky. <laughs> Here it is, Mother. I put it in the closet for safekeeping. I never should have let him go. The next summer, now it's 1945 for reference, they tried to go back, but it wasn't the same. <sighs> Honey was still grieving because I don't think you get over the loss of your child that quickly, but she had no outlet for help. You were not allowed to express your emotions in any form of outburst, justified or otherwise, was deemed hysteria. This went for men and women. Now we know. I have a right to be upset! At the end of summer, the war ended, and Beatrice and Honey went into town, where the people were holding celebrations. Honey was thrilled, and Beatrice was even allowed to try ice cream. Can I get a freezy pop? Sure, darling. You can have whatever you want. Uh Albeit it was an ice pop, not soft serve, but it was something. Then Honey's jaw dropped. She saw a piano, something she and her son used to always play, and she effectively had a mental breakdown. Why did everybody stop, huh? What's the gag? I want to dance. I want to fly! Okay, I want to talk about this scene because there's something important you need to realize. Honey was singing to herself. There was nobody there in the past. Just Eddie singing in the future. And everybody was staring at her. Not as if to say, oh, poor girl, look at her. Rather, what the hell is she doing? Imagine the awkwardness of it all, especially for Beatrice. Honey got drunk and decided she couldn't possibly drive her and Beatrice home. Pretty sure this was before taxis were a thing. So she made Beatrice do it herself. <laughs> I want to feel alive again. I'd do anything to feel alive. Was she doing that as a fight or flight? Or because she was drunk? Or was she trying to reunite the both of them with Cracker Jack? Thankfully, her and Beatrice survived, but Joseph isn't happy. You mustn't despise me, darling, please. And that's before even mentioning poor Beatrice. You aiming to get her killed as well? She's all we got. Look, he's got a point, but if you just talk to your wife, maybe this would have been avoided. I must be going. As a modern American man, I am woefully unprepared to manage a woman's emotions. I was never taught, and I will not learn. Take care, you two. Honey didn't know what to do and begged Joseph to fix her. And since this was the 40s, there was only one thing to be done. Mother? Oh, hello. It's Beatrice. Yes, that's right. What a pretty girl. Okay, this is another part where I'm gonna have to talk about history, and I'm kind of excited to. I had to write a full-on paper for lobotomies in high school. They're horrific, but fun to learn about. If you didn't know, a lobotomy is a procedure where they would sever the connections in your prefrontal cortex for a variety of reasons, usually to correct behavior. Sometimes you would come out of surgery and nothing would change. Other times you would permanently lose all function and end up as a vegetable or an other 
other instances, you die shortly after. Lobotomies are so controversial that there have been calls to rescind the Nobel Prize of Antonio Eges Moniz, I hope I'm saying that right, since he was the co-inventor of the lobotomy. Ironically, most of the people who got lobotomies were women. One of the most noteworthy cases was Rosemary Kennedy, a sister of JFK, who I'm pretty sure they based honey on. As a teenager, Rosemary was, at best, super rambunctious, outspoken, and rebellious. At worst, she was an intellectually disabled girl with anger problems. But because her father and brothers were politicians, Rosemary was given a lobotomy at the age of 23. This turned her into a permanent child and meant she needed constant care for the rest of her life. Afterwards, she was hidden from the world, especially during her brother's presidential campaign, since it was easier to hide things from the press back then. Rosemary's father did this without consulting her mother, and none of her siblings apparently knew what happened to her until their dad died of a stroke. Much like Rosemary, the lobotomy permanently altered Honey and resulted in a living death. Beatrice lost her mother. Why, I have half a mind. Another thing I want to point out, whenever they did lobotomies, they would try to take cosmetic reasons into account. That way you could hide the scar with your hair or a hat. Sometimes they would use an ice pick through the eye, that way there would be no scar, or do it along the hairline or on top of the scalp. The crew probably made Honey scar this way to make it more symbolic, but I would argue that in universe, Joseph just wanted his wife fixed as quickly as possible and didn't care how they did it so long as they did it. Sadly, it's in character. I've also heard some people say the reason the lobotomy was so unsuccessful was they did it on the wrong spot. I mean, it probably would have been otherwise, but still in character. Regardless, this was the day Beatrice lost her mother. She was left with some parting words. Love does things to a person. Terrible things. Beatrice? Promise me you'll never love anyone as much as I loved Cracker Jack. Now, when I decided to write the script, this was the scene I most wanted to talk about. Mostly because I believe this moment in particular is a red herring. Mostly. Not that it isn't traumatizing, but I don't think this promise is why Beatrice doesn't care for Bojack. All things considered. At the time, being so young, Beatrice probably didn't even know what she was agreeing to. Indulge me for a moment and take a look at this. Oh, <laughs> Like usual, I believe this is meant to be a deconstruction. With sitcoms, there usually is the cliche of one bad thing led to me becoming the way I am. Like Benny Lopez didn't take George to Disneyland, so he doesn't go there with Max. As an adult, Beatrice only began to seriously neglect Bojack after reality came a knocking, and she realized childcare was a thankless job. <sighs> oh, you better be worth all this. The point of Beatrice isn't that one crappy childhood turned her into the way she was, or even just one bad event. Rather, it was a series of poor decisions coupled with all the abuse that factored into her being a bad mom. Sad as it is to say, Honey was just one stone on the cobblestone path, because now we're getting to the good stuff. Honey is a living shell, so she wasn't able to watch Beatrice, who soon came down with scarlet fever, which back then was a death sentence. As expected, Beatrice did recover but woke up one night to find all her possessions being burned by the servants. Remember what we say about crying? Mm -hmm. Crying is stupid. I don't want to make that same, it's a right to cry joke, three times in a row because then it leads to summoning and I have a lot on my plate. You're lucky, Joseph. Her father even took her prized baby doll and threw it into the fire. Oh, my baby! Yes, especially your baby. <gasps> See, doesn't that feel better? No! When she obviously wailed with grief, Joseph told her, You can't let your womanly emotions consume you. You don't want to end up like your mother now, do you? No. Originally, I was going to say this was a bluff. Like, if you don't eat your vegetables, no TV for a month. But they actually did lobotomize kids. That's like insane. I don't know if he meant it in the sense of, if you don't quit your yapping, I'll lobotomize you next. But yes, this was a thing that happened. Once again, this factors into the historical side of things. Scarlet fever can be spread by contact with anything the infected person touched, so it was common practice to burn everything that person owned, so the rest of the household did not 
not get sick. This was a few years before stuff like disinfectant became common. But that doesn't mean Joseph couldn't have been a little gentler about it. He could have tried to tell her, sweetie, it has to go or everybody else will get sick. Do you really want me or your mother to get sick? I'm sorry, but it has to be this way. Which admittedly, he does try, but not in a way I'm sure Beatrice would understand. Father, tell them not to burn my things. But darling, they have to. Your sickness has infected everything. It all must be destroyed for your own good. All she knows is her stuff is being destroyed and it's all because there's something wrong with her. Or maybe he could have not burned it while she was asleep. Do it while she's at school, as there's less of a chance for her to stumble on what happened. That way, he could have said something like, sweetie, I sent your things off to be cleaned. But something happens, I'm sorry. But this memory stayed with Beatrice, and likely on top of everything else, convinced her to repress any and all emotion. After high school, Beatrice enrolled in college. She went to Barnard, which back then, and still today, is practically female Columbia. I wonder if she went to the Seinfeld restaurant? It's like down the street and it's so good. Joseph sent her for the express purpose of an MRS degree, meaning you go to find a husband and once you accomplish that, you drop out and start making babies. But instead of a bachelor, you returned home with a bachelor's degree and a mouthful of sass. What a waste. I like to think she got a degree in English or literature. Not just because I'm an English major, but she seemed to have a major interest in reading. Even after her dad told her boys wanted girls with nice bodies, not brains. Stop making books your friends. Reading does nothing for young women but build their brains, taking valuable resources away from their breasts and hips. Um, Joseph, boys like girls who can make them laugh and challenge them on an intellectual level. Remember that. Beatrice was like all college kids when they come home for the first time. Time. They think they understand how the world works, and now they're better than their crusty old parents. Will it end poverty, war, and injustice, or bring back civil rights activist Medgar Evers? Yes, or rather, it will end you worrying about that nonsense, because it will land you a husband. I hate to say it, but in some ways, she kind of was. Joseph tried telling her about an idea he had for a commercial, where he and another businessman would be appearing. Beatrice actually gave some constructive criticism he did not appreciate. How many Americans don't want you on their TV sets? You're a reminder of the disparity of wealth in this country. Poor people find that dreadfully gauche. It's ironic to think that Joseph hated women so much, and yet he had a viable error in one. Beatrice could have run the company, but instead, he saw her as a literal broodmare, and it caused her to run off and ruin his legacy. Because we see in present day that because he had no other heirs, or because he didn't like what Beatrice did, the company got sold off when he died. Self-fulfilling prophecy, I must say. No wonder his family crumbled. His mindset worked against him. In her mid-twenties, Joseph finally convinced her to have a debutante ball. I'm sorry, I'm not always good at these things. Ah, that's all right. I'm not either. Yeah, Beatrice, I'm with you right there. I hate parties. Total introvert. Joseph arranged for Beatrice to be chaperoned by a boy named Corbin Kreberman, the heir to a vast cream fortune. Ew. And not so subtly, subtly, implied that he wanted Beatrice and Corbin to hook up so their dads could partner their businesses together and make an alliance. Think of all the free ice cream you could, uh, serve to other people. Alas, Beatrice found Corbin boring and the party boring. That's when she met Butterscotch. Beatrice Sugarman, welcome to my dumb party. Butterscotch Horseman, charmed, I'm sure. Question. What's with his voice this episode? Like, it sounds super filtered. Is it because of Beatrice's dementia, or was it an error? Butterscotch enticed Beatrice by his enjoyment of literature and his moxie in crashing her party. So after her debut, the two slipped out and went into Butterscotch's car to ride him horsey. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Two weeks later, Joseph forced Beatrice to go on another date with Corbin. That's when she realized they had some things in common. They both had controlling fathers who did not understand them, and Corbin had interests other people saw as weird. I got ideas too, and I feel I never get to be anything other than what he expects me to be. You know what that's like? I do. One question I know gets asked a lot is, if Beatrice married Corbin, would she have been happy? Even Beatrice wonders this. I should have married Corbin Creamerman. Ha! <laughs> like he'd have you. Oh, he would have. And he would have been kind to me. And I'd argue, no. I mean, 
I don't think she would have been miserable, but I feel like she would have been bored or felt unfulfilled. In essence, she would have been like Hedda Gabler, a wild woman who gets tamed by marriage because she was getting too old, but now feels unstimulated and confined with no hope of escape. If she married Corbin, she would have stayed in Michigan and been more dependent on her father. Same goes for Corbin. Some people say, oh, Corbin might have let Beatrice help run the company, but for all we know, he could have listened to his dad and kept her confined to the kitchen. Drew Bojack probably would not be forced to finish cigarettes, but Beatrice would have been more like Blanche DuBow, where she makes the nannies handle all the childcare. Bojack would have instead been upset his mother was never there for him. Not that she was there and sharply critical whenever he did anything. But don't worry, because Bojack beat his man, decided for his mom. Corbin? It occurs to me that perhaps you and I aren't so- Oh dear! Beatrice went to meet with Butterscotch after she found out she was pregnant. Maybe you have a cousin who has a, a, a friend who knows a doctor who can take care of such inconveniences. I'm, I'm happy to do the gentlemanly thing and, and pay for the cab fare. Okay, this is where I got a little hesitant about making this video, and it's part of why it took so long, because I felt like this was an interesting discussion point, and likely one that's gonna get me cancelled. But I thought the same about my fellows video and my chef video, so here we go. Even if back then this wasn't the hot button topic it is today, you have to remember that around this time it was still illegal or close to illegal in most states. True, Butterscotch brings up they could always try and go underground, but that might have run into complications depending on how it was done or who did it. Remember the movie Dirty Dancing? I didn't know that was the subplot until like two years ago. Nobody puts Beatrice Houseman in a corner. There's also the issue of what does Beatrice tell her father if something goes belly up? Implicitly, she went to Butterscotch first. How would Joseph react if she told him first? Would he just fly Beatrice to Connecticut? kid to hang out with her great aunt Flo for nine months and then give Bojack up for adoption? Tell the press that he and Honey got lucky and Bojack is Beatrice's little brother? Which actually gives me dark questions about what he did to Honey after the procedure, like in terms of bedroom life. Would he fly her to a state where it was legal and bribe a doctor to keep quiet, disown her, and make her marry Butterscotch? How would this affect Corbin? Would he marry Beatrice but move the wedding up and pass Bojack off as his son? Would his father think Beatrice was a ruined woman and force him to call off the engagement. Regardless, Beatrice couldn't go through with it because it reminded her of how she lost her baby doll. No. I can't. Well, that doesn't leave us with very many options. And likely because Beatrice was the daughter of a high-class guy, the only option was the shotgun wedding. Butterscotch and Beatrice were happy about this arrangement. Nine months later, Beatrice gave birth to Bojack. I like to think Bojack has such a unique name because he was named after all the men in his mother's life. E for Butterscotch, Bo rhymes with Joe for Joseph, and Jack for Cracker Jack. Then there was trouble in paradise. <laughs> come on, come on, come on. Sleep. The baby's hungry. I tried. He won't eat. I don't know what he wants. Well, can you figure it out? Because Beatrice wanted to make it on her own, she learns that it sucks to marry the first person you slept with, especially at a time when you can't work yourself and you have little means of escape. Butterscotch couldn't make it as a writer because his ideas were too conservative, and he would not accept any handouts from Beatrice's side of the family. Even if Joseph wouldn't have minded giving him a cushy corner office job, which per him... The corner office with the company car, six-figure salary, and four weeks paid vacation. Like, I'm surprised Joseph was willing to do that. Instead, Butterscotch tried to support his family by working at a fish canning factory. How was work, darling? Ugh, terrible. Those fish do not like being canned. Why does this remind me of Drake and Josh? Quickly, resentment boils over on both sides, and they took their displeasure out on each other. Their family was as toxic as arsenic in a cream of botulinum soup. I'm not a baby, I'm six. Yes, wah, wah, good, good. Google. I'm forming sentences. Oh, and I can't? Everyone's a critic. Another thing I think you might have wondered is why does Bojack wear a sailor suit as a child? If I had to guess, this was Beatrice pretending she was still wealthy or holding onto whatever little bastion she had left. That's part of why I think she joined her supper club. Did you know that in the royal family, it's tradition that young boys can't wear trousers, at least at official events, until they hit their eighth birthday? Sort of as a class identifier, maybe Beatrice got the inspiration from that. One argument later, 
Butterscotch agreed to take the job at Sugarman Industries, and this enabled them to move up in life from lower middle class to upper middle class. Still, both neglected Bojack to the extreme. Beatrice forced him to perform at her supper club, despite his discomfort. Can't lives in a house on Wont Street. You will not embarrass me in front of the entire supper club. I told them you were going to sing the lollipop song. And Butterscotch would rant at him whenever he had to do daddy duties. Last night she went to see a doll's house with a couple of girlfriends, but she'd furthermore locked herself in the bedroom to weep. Loudly. That's when you know they're doing it just for the attention. Actually, this is more effed up when you remember the play is all about a woman realizing she only married because she was expected to, and because of the time period, leaving to find herself meant leaving her kids behind. No wonder Beatrice idolizes Ibsen. He's like the feminist equivalent to Shakespeare. Because both were miserable together, and likely because divorce was still a taboo subject, Butterscotch and Beatrice stayed married, only in name, while Butterscotch gallivanted with his fillies. One such filly, despite being a human, was Henrietta Planchkey, a nursing student who worked as a maid to pay tuition. Henrietta, will you help me pack this? I want to bring it to my son. <laughs> oh, that's so nice. Apparently, they did design a face for Henrietta, which made her look horse-like, according to Lisa Hannawalt. Sucks we never got to see it. Kind of continuing with the Blanche Dubo comparisons, which I love Blanche, so I'm sorry if it sounds negative. When Bojack was older, she did occasionally try to reconnect with him, but either couldn't get out of her own way or he wanted nothing to do with her. One time, she tried to give him a painting that belonged to Joseph, but spent the entire time yelling at him. I drove it all the way down here, didn't I? You might as well take it. I said I'll take it. Of course. Take. That's all you ever do. <sighs> Just pour me a drink and I'll be on my way. Yeah, let's get you good and liquored up before you drive back up the coast. T.I.L. that San Francisco and L.A. are not next to each other. They look close together on a map. I didn't know it's like a six hour drive. Butterscotch, eventually got Henrietta pregnant. Uh, uh, Beatrice. What? I, uh, <laughs> I gummed things up. Uh, <laughs> oh? You know they make rubbers, right, Butterscotch? Oh, wait, rubbers. Well, magnums are sold in most convenience stores. Do you really want this child? I, I think so. It's a baby horse. <laughs> My girl. Ugh, that poor Henrietta. Unfortunately, he couldn't talk her out of terminating the pregnancy, so he went to Beatrice. Please, just fix this for me, please. I know you hate me, B, but please just think of the poor girl. Probably the only good thing he ever did. Alas, Beatrice was mostly unsuccessful. If I can just finish school and get a job, it'll be okay. And who's going to care for the baby while you work? Because God knows he won't. <laughs> <laughs> Word of advice, why not tell her what it's like to push out a horse baby? Beatrice and Henrietta eventually came to a compromise. The horsemen's would pay for her tuition, and likely also her hospital bills, and Henrietta would give the baby up for adoption. You think you want this, but you don't. Not like this. Yes, this horse. Don't throw away your dreams for this child. <sighs> Please, Henrietta, you have to believe me. Please. Don't do what I did. So Henrietta gave birth to a baby, who turned out to be Hollyhock, and Beatrice took her away as soon as she was born. Wait, wait, I want to hold her. No, you'll get attacked. Wait, please, I need to hold her. No, no, wait, no, please come back, I need to hold her, please. Likely because either Beatrice thought she was helping, or just as a final F.U., the name on Hollyhock's birth certificate is Girl Horse. You know, this is a really sad moment, but I've wondered what Beatrice told Butterscotch, since even if his name was on Hollyhock's birth certificate, he wasn't around when Henrietta gave birth. Did he even know that she carried Hollyhock to term? Or did Beatrice tell him something like, don't worry, I took care of it, but we have to keep paying her? This was the last hurrah for their marriage. Butterscotch died during a failed duel and at his funeral, Beatrice realized my husband is dead and everything is worse now. Butterscotch was never good with money and he frittered away her inheritance. So she had to sell all her possessions and her house and move into a nursing home. And in a roundabout way, we're back to the nursing home. I'll be at a different one. Who is that? Ugh, bye mom. Bojack? Mom? But Bojack? Is that you? In her last true moment of lucidity, Beatrice recognizes Bojack. Now he can do anything he wants. He can tell her off. He could just walk away. Instead, he lets her off before he says goodbye forever. I don't understand. Where, where am I? You're in Michigan. 
Michigan. He makes her think they're back in Michigan at the lake house and she returns the favor. The one good thing she ever did for him. And we're eating ice cream. Vanilla ice cream. Can you taste the ice cream, mom? Oh, Bojack. It's so delicious. I know some people are like, well, she had ice cream, but I don't think she ever did. She never had vanilla ice cream. And I'm sure she does not remember the two licks she got off of the Freezy Pop. No ice cream for me, Henrietta. I'm watching my figure. Yeah, you want to look pretty for when death comes to visit. And considering how she was still taking pretty pills as an adult and was trying to push it onto Hollyhock, I think it's safe to say she did not touch the stuff. So Bojack leaves his mom for one more season. And free churro, Beatrice succumbs to her dementia. I I just got a free churro because my mom died. No one ever tells you when your mom dies, you get a free churro. <clears throat> Which I was curious how dementia kills, and they say you don't just forget names or faces, but how to do basic tasks. Like if a dementia patient needs help feeding themselves, they don't have long. Eventually, they might even forget how to breathe. Okay, that's scary. On her deathbed, she told Bojack, I see you. And Bojack spends her eulogy trying to figure out what that means. Did she mean it in the sense of, I see you? One last moment before the darkness took her? Did she say it to spike Bojack? Try to tell him, I love you, but the words came out wrong? Or was it, I see you. Jesus Christ. We were in the intensive care unit. She was just reading a sign. Personally, I think it was a mix of it all. My theory is Beatrice was reliving one of her memories, like, like Bojack, I see you, you little twerp, or Father, I see you, or Mother, I see you, are you standing in the doorway? Regardless of what it was, it didn't matter. She never gave Bojack any form of kindness, so why would he expect to receive it when she's on her deathbed? Like, how hard is it to do something nice for a person? I'm your son. All I had was you. And one more thing I want to add before I finish up this little timeline is I can kind of understand why this episode lost the Emmy as much as I think it really should have won. Bojack is one of the most continuity driven shows, not cartoons, shows in recent years to the point where you have to watch every episode, including the filler episodes, just to understand it. One of lines stab you in the back three seasons later. When I first watched Bojack, I couldn't get past episode three, so I watched episodes people hailed as the best. See if the show was worth continuing. One of those was Free Churro. Since I didn't fully watch all those moments where Beatrice belittles him, I saw the episode as a 25 minute lecture with a funny moment at the end. When I did fully watch the show, that episode, while it isn't my favorite, blew me away. Bojack is a cartoon, and unfortunately, cartoons are still super stigmatized, especially in award circuits. I doubt most of the Emmy voters even bothered to watch the show or watched enough of it to fully understand why that episode was so important. <sighs> Sad but true. So what can we get from Beatrice that hasn't already been said? Well, one thing I found about Beatrice that helped me was the idea that sometimes it's okay to emphasize with abusive or toxic relatives. In a sense, hear me out. I'm not saying you have to forgive or excuse them because that doesn't change what they did. And I think by now, you know my thoughts on the matter. But as somebody who did grow up with toxic relatives, something you hear a lot is, oh, you're like them. Occasionally, it's meant as a term of endearment, which that person probably doesn't realize is a super scary compliment. Sometimes it's meant to be a word of warning. This is where Fleas comes in. I have a problem with repressing my anger and being too stubborn because I spent a good part of my life being forced to walk on eggshells around temperamental, stubborn people. And I have a problem with criticism because I was put down all my life. Being on YouTube has helped me stand up for myself in real life and realize that when somebody criticizes you, it's not always meant to be a bad thing. While I might not enjoy every comment I get, I do try to take the negative ones into consideration because that's the only way you improve and there's a thing or two you can learn from, the haters as some people call them. Beatrice has taught me that it's important to see where that person is coming from or why they act the way they do. That way, you don't end up repeating their mistakes. If you want to break the cycle, you have to understand why it happens. Bojack was told all his life he wasn't allowed to cry. And look at where it got him. Ha <laughs> 
when he has hollyhock he might think oh my mom told me not to cry because she was told not to cry but now i know that's bad instead of yelling at her i'll do what my mom never did and it actually works twice <laughs> Ew, stop that i know it's stupid there there you are so bad at this. And that was Beatrice Horseman. And dang, this video was long, like longest script to date. Beatrice is a complicated character. True, like Sarah Lynn, I think she's a little overrated and everything that's been said about her has already been said, but I still like the path they took with her. Does her sad childhood excuse her as an adult? No, absolutely not. But it shows me that you are allowed to sympathize with her or people like her and treat her as a cautionary tale. And since this video is super bleak, here's a funny clip that might make you laugh. Henrietta, I am talking to the sun. Sun, you're a ball of gas, but you're also a star. We call you sun.